Hey guys, so after reading through some of the comments over uh, like the last two years or whatever, I've noticed a lot of people are still getting stuck and admittedly it's not the best tutorial, so I'm making this video to help and clear some stuff up with you guys and uh, to help anyone out that's a bit stuck or doesn't quite understand. So I've already got Ableton loaded up and um, I'm just going to quickly go through two important aspe uh, three important aspects. One. A lot of people aren't turning on their Akai before they open their software. Um, some software, it'll work without turning it on, but for example, in Ableton, make sure you turn it, your Akai on or any anything using MIDI before you use it, or it will not work. I can guarantee you 100% it will not work, okay? So, as you can see, ours is open, it's working uh, from what I just tipped before. Now, if you want to use MIDI, make sure you have some kind of MIDI interface to go to your computer. In my case, I'm just going to quickly grab this. In my case, I got an M Audio Quad Track, uh, which has inputs for MIDI at the back and outputs for MIDI. Um, and that allows me to... I also have... An, it allows me to use MIDI without plugging in an, another one. Now, this is also... This is by... I have no idea... It's by M Audio, but I have no idea what it's called. It's called MIDI Man. I don't use it, but it's basically exactly the same thing, just in its own unit uh, if you don't have one. Um, and you're going to need those if you want to use MIDI. Uh, well, at least one of the two. Preferably an interface. It's a lot easier if you get an interface that'll do it. Now, presuming you have that, you need a MIDI cable. Now, a MIDI cable... Now, don't be confused by, like, high-priced MIDI cables and sh You shouldn't have to pay a lot of money for a MIDI cable. They all do the same thing, okay? And I don't know if you can see that, but at the top, it's just got a five-pin connector. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that? One, two, three, four, five. And um, that's just basically what a MIDI cable looks like. And... So what you want to do is plug all that in, turn it on, then open, for in this example, Ableton. So we've got Ableton open here. Now, here's what's important. When you're using MIDI, you are not using the samples inside of the Akai. Okay, like you may see it load up by default on Adidas. Adidas. I have no idea how to say that. But, um... It's not using those samples, okay? MIDI, what the MIDI is doing is it's for use if you have samples on your computer. So I've started off just previously by opening up Contact 5 and loading in just a drum kit inside. And what I want to show you is that whatever I do in here, for example, like by whatever I do in here, I mean any all these samples here, all these parts of the drum kit are all samples inside of my software. Now, if I want to trigger these samples, I could create, I could click on them in this software, for example, or I could create just a simple drum pattern and just go bass. So, I could do this. But that sounds very static. It sounds very quantized, very on time. And that's just what's going to happen because obviously it is in time. We can see that 100%. But no one's going to play MIDI notes like that. And that's the purpose of the sampler, uh, of the of using this drum machine as a MIDI machine, is to play those samples and give a nice little rhythm without making it sound like a computer's doing it, basically. You want some kind of performance like a person's playing it. So then you go... And you get that dynamic range, and you get those unquantized notes, etc. And then you can fix it up and all that kind of stuff later. That's the purpose of MIDI. You're not actually playing the samples in the Akai. You're playing the samples on the computer. Yeah? So, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to unplug my MIDI. Obviously, it's not going to work. Alright, and I'm just going to open up an audio channel. And... This is what you need if you want to use the samples inside of this machine. You're going to need a 
stereo pair of TR TRS cables. Okay. Now, these that actually worked really well. I didn't even mean to slide it down like that, but you know. So on the back. We've already spoken about the MIDI outs and MIDI throughs and stuff on the previous video, but for now... Ah! It fell. But stay. Stay, you stupid thing. Sorry about this, guys. I don't actually have a camera anymore. Everything's broken and shit, so I haven't done one in a while. Now, you want to use the main out, which is... Yeah, you can see it here. I'll just plug these in. Main and left, uh, main right out and main left out. That's what you want to use. So, basic rule of thumb: white one, main left, and this orange one in the main right. Just remember, just always use the standard way of doing it, so that no matter what, if you're plugging it into here, this is only short. But if you're plugging it into another room from your control room or something, you always know which one's left and which one's right, pretty much. Otherwise, you're going to be confuzzled by things are on different sides. So, I'm just going to plug these into my interface quickly, which you don't really need to see because it's not important. Alright, so, now I've got these plugged into my interface. I'm just going to put this back up here. Alright, now I can't actually open up my inputs and outputs using this damned camera thing that i got going. So, I'm just going to lower Ableton a bit, drag it open, drag it open open it and then pull it back up okay so now we got our inputs now oh shit, sorry I got the gain turned all the way up from when I was trying to do other stuff before so I'll just turn it up okay so now what you're hearing is the samples inside of the Akai now you'll see Alright, so that's the samples inside of the Akai. Change the sample pack. Changes. Um, and yeah, that's that's the basic two-way difference between the two. Now, MIDI is useful, like, um, uh, it can be useful for playing drum, like, the main thing that you want a drum machine for is one-shot samples and drums, obviously. Um, for MIDI, that is. So... Like, you can see in here, they've got one-shot samples. Yeah, so they're, they're like one-shot samples. So you can trigger all those kind of things with uh, MIDI through a drum machine as well, uh, which is quite useful. And then sometimes uh, a few companies do it with basses as well. And stuff. So um, that's what the MIDI is for. If you want to use the samples that came with the Akai or any piece of MIDI equipment that is also an instrument itself, uh, such as a synthesizer or all that kind of shit, um, make sure you use audio cables. You're going to need the audio cables. Yeah, and another thing that I didn't actually show you is... Probably won't work now, like I said, because I unplugged it from Ableton. Um, another thing you can do is if you want to use the audio from the Akai um, but you want to see like how on beat you are etc or anything like that if you want to save the actual MIDI you want to see where the percussion is on your screen you can actually plug the MIDI in at the same time oh it will work because I already had it plugged into the back of my M audio but yeah and then you can see what you're doing so like if I wanted to The reason why this has come up so big is because I've actually got this sitting on my MIDI keyboard. Let me just get rid of that. Okay. But, um, give me a second, I'll show you. It's on channel 2. See? And there you have it. So, whatever you're doing, you can see it there visually, what you're doing. And then another great thing is, is... If you have it plugged into the MIDI in and the MIDI out of your interface, what you can do then is you can say, okay, well, I've screwed up, like, say, like, well, this is no real pattern or anything, but let's say, oh, well, this isn't on beat and that's not on beat. What if I move it just slightly and get this one slightly close to the beat? 
Then what I can do is, is I can actually record it. I can actually play that MIDI back to the drum machine and record it. So it's still my performance, but I've changed it a bit if I can't play it that well and made it sound as if I could play it, put it that way. So the way you do that is, there's a couple of different ways to do it. This is a very quick way. I, I don't have it plugged in to my MIDI in, so I'll have to do that now. Um, oh, actually, I can't because it's... Yeah, I can't do that for you at the moment, but I can basically show you the tools that are going to help you do that. So we want to go here to our sounds. I'm pretty sure I haven't done this in a while. Instrument, sorry. External instrument, go there. MIDI 2, and then you want to send it to wherever. So this is my keyboard here. That's my uh, M Audio thing with the uh, MIDI outs on it. So I'm, I would send it to there. Then I'd pick what channel. So as we saw before, this is on channel 2. And I showed in the last video how to change the channels and all that kind of stuff. So mine's on channel 2, so put it on channel 2. And then we want the audio to come from here. Yeah. And that's basically it. So then we could play this back. If we had, the like I said, there's no MIDI out at the moment. I can try and see if it will work. I doubt it. But no harm in trying, I suppose. So if you're getting photos up my nose, I can't actually see what I'm doing. Okay. And let's see if this will work. Hopefully it does. Let's have a look, see. Okay, ignore that. This just started playing samples of its own. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we're going to just clip it down to when the stuff starts happening. Alright. Aside from it automatically start playing that other thing because I changed something on it. Um, we'll get rid of that, actually. You can see it's playing exactly what I've done there. Now let's just clean it up a bit. Um, this is going to be the end of the video. There's not much in this video. It's just to show you guys, just to show you some of the mistakes people make. And uh, hopefully it's cleared some things up for you guys. So yeah, it's going to play exactly what I show it. Um, and that's something you can do with MIDI. Uh, is play something, see how you're going, you don't like it, get the MIDI in, get the MIDI out, see what you're doing, play the recordings, change it, then send it back out to the Akai, record the samples from the Akai if that's what you want to do, obviously you do if you're using the audio cables, record it, send it in, change it, send it out, it'll play by itself, record it, done. And that's pretty much it. That's all you really have to do. It's great to use MIDI in combination with audio, uh, with um, MIDI in combination with recording it. Uh, it means that regardless of what you've done, you can always see what you've done. Whether it's like I showed you before with the actual audio. Now to record this audio, I forgot to say, sorry, um, is we actually have to select the external instrument, post mixer, record. Yeah, so there we are there. But as you can see here, like it's pretty obvious here, but if you had a really elaborate pattern, you wouldn't be able to see what's going on. But if I click back here, I can go, okay, there's my bass, there's my snare, bass, bass, snare. And I can see my patterns. I can see what's going on straight away. It makes it much easier. So I hope this helps some of you guys. Oh, actually, just quickly uh, for some of you. Now, in your MIDI settings in Ableton, one or two people asked me about this. Okay, now in here... This top section is for a control surface. That is not what the MIDI you're using for this, okay? Um, let me just turn this off and get this out of my way so I can show you what a control surface looks like. This is just a small one by Korg, and it's basically just got some faders on it and stuff. let me do some basic. I actually ran out of recording time on this stupid thing I'm using. Um, anyway, like I was saying, this area up here is control surfaces. That's controlling my Korg Nano Control 2, and it's telling Ableton that that's what those MIDI signals are doing. They're controlling Ableton. Now, you can see down here that my Q49, which is my keyboard, my MIDI keyboard, down here, you can see that that 
is set to control, is synced and tracked, etc. Don't worry, you can read up what these separate ones do rather than me trying to explain it because I have some music stuff to do and I need to get going. Um, but basically, you can read here. Input from the Q49, so you want the input from the MIDI from the Q49 to go into Ableton. Okay, on the track, you can read it down here. Actually, you know what, just pause it. I'll just go over each of these and you can see what it does. Just pause it. Okay, awesome. So, okay, and then you tick the appropriate one. Do you want the output to go to the Q49? All right, don't get confused. It's not the output. You don't want the output from the Q49. Do you want to output to the Q49? Sorry about if that popped. Yeah, so you want, do you want the input from the Q49? Or do you want the mid input from your MIDI interface? And do you want to give it to your MIDI instrument? So do you want it from your MIDI instrument? And do you want to give it to the MIDI instrument? That's basically what it's saying here. But this area up here, very important, that's for control surfaces. Okay, if you're using something like the UK, I don't think you would really find any use for using that as a control surface, really. You could do the exact same things by just... Um, you could probably map your own console surface for it if you really wanted to. But uh, that's mainly for things like that chord that has the sliders and all that kind of stuff that's useful. So I hope this has helped you guys, um, especially anyone confused with how to get it hooked up in Ableton. Oh, and just one quick thing before... I, I can't remember how I said it in the last video. I think I called it Ableton. Ableton? A a Ableton? I don't, I don't know. Ableton. Anyway, I, I don't I remember how I said it, but I said it funny. I remember hearing it. But um, anyways, yeah, guys, I hope that helps you guys that don't really understand too much um, about what exactly is going on, etc. All right, so that pretty much sums up everything I have to say here in regards to what I've seen from some of the questions. Um, if you guys have anything further wrong, etc., comment and let me know and I'll try and help you as best as I can. If it's stuff with other things like Fruity Loops, I've never really used Fruity Loops, so I'm not sure how much of a help I'm going to be able to be there. Pro Tools I use, Logic, all that kind of stuff, I can probably help you out fairly well with, but those work pretty smoothly, to be honest, so you shouldn't really have much of a problem. Mainly Pro Tools, not so much, but Logic, etc. should. So, um, yeah, if you have any further problems and... Um, if you guys have any suggestions for something that you want a video of, I have quite a few different uh, bits of gear. I don't know if you can see much of it here, but I, um, yeah, there is quite a few. I actually have an old Roland MC303 inside of this cabinet that you can't see. Oh yeah, you can see the knobs just there. But yeah, so if you guys have any further videos or questions that you want answered, etc., just let me know and I'll try and help you guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, because as, I, as I've said before, it does take time to do these kind of things. And I'm quite busy working and doing all kinds of music stuff, etc. But yeah, um, hope that helps. Have a good one, guys. See you later. Where the friggin' hell's the stop button on this stupid piece of software?